This is Taya Graham reporting for the Real News Network in Talbot County, Maryland. I'm here on the eastern shore in front of the Talbot County Courthouse, where yet another controversy is unfolding involving race and government transparency. The monuments which dominate the Talbot County Courthouse lawn in Easton, Maryland, exemplify all the contradictions and ambivalence about race in America. On one side, a statue of Frederick Douglass, a former slave who gained freedom from a plantation just down the road and wrote a seminal history of his personal struggles. But just a few feet away sits a monument to the very institution who wanted to keep Douglass in chains. A statue honoring the Talbot Boys, Confederate soldiers who fought to preserve slavery on the Eastern Shore and beyond. And these two symbols standing side by side are at the root of yet another conflict over past injustices and what their remaining icons mean today. It represents a group of people who wanted to keep a group of people like myself enslaved. So for us, it, 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 it's a matter of glorifying those who who uh, supported slavery. That's because the Talbot County branch of the NAACP wants the Talbot Boy statue removed, particularly given its spot on the lawn of the courthouse, a supposed place of justice, but also a past scene of lynchings and discrimination. In fact, in 1933, the last lynching of an African-American man in Maryland occurred in nearby Princess Anne County, and Walter Black was given a first-hand account of the last Talbot County lynching from his grandfather, who was a witness. A black individual was accused of killing um, his employer, and um, he, was, um, he was shot, and then he didn't die at that point. He was taken to the uh, hospital there, and the lynch mob went and got him out of the hospital, tied him behind a car, drug him down Main Street and through the black neighborhood, hollering, anybody want a nigger sandwich? Now, I know this is true because my grandfather told me, and he, at that time, he was a chef at was, what was then the Wacomico Hotel, which uh, was located right across the street from the courthouse lawn. He stood in uh, the, the um, doorway kitchen doorway of the hotel and watched as the mob threw the rope across the uh, tree limb on the courthouse lawn and lynched this individual. The Talbot County Council denied the request for the statue's removal, but it was how that process unfolded that has raised questions and prompted the Maryland ACLU to get involved. Both organizations have filed a Joint Open Meetings Act complaint alleging Talbot County officials met secretly behind closed doors to decide the fate of the statue. The complaint reveals Talbot County Council members voted in secret sometime in November of 2015 to keep the monument in place. The private vote was a stark departure from the process which led to the approval of the Frederick Douglass statue in 2002. Then the council held public hearings and voted again in public to approve it. Which is why the NAACP is asking the state to rule the actions of the council and their vote to keep the Talbot boys in place. Illegal. And they read us a letter uh, in terms of their decision. We did not see a formal process of voting as to our request, the NAACP's request, to relocate the statue. We reached out to Talbot County Council President Corey Pack. He referred us to the county law department, which released this statement. In it, County Attorney Michael Pullen says the council was performing what's known as an administrative function in deciding what to do with the statue. He says the law allows for such proceedings to be closed to the public. But this is not the first time a majority white council on Maryland's eastern shore has made racially charged decisions outside public purview. The Real News Network was kicked out of a city council meeting after the city of Pocomoke fired its first black police chief, Kelvin Sewell. Sewell has since filed a lawsuit alleging he was terminated for refusing to fire two black officers who had filed federal equal opportunity complaints against a Worcester County drug task force. We later learned city officials fired Sewell during a closed door meeting in June of 2015, which state officials said was legal, even though the council has still not shared with the public what went on and why. This apparent lack of transparency concerning racially divisive issues on the Eastern Shore is why Meredith Curtis says the ACLU has weighed in with multiple Open Meetings Act complaints. On the Eastern Shore, there clearly are vestiges of um, racial injustice. Um, the ACLU has been involved in many issues over the decades to try to address voting rights issues, to try to address um, government employment issues. Um, the Confederate statue in Talbot County is just the latest um, example of communities that are truly still struggling with um, a history of segregation that does not feel very far away. And promises they will continue to push for these decisions to be made in public in the future. 
For now, Talbot County NAACP President Richard Potter says he wants answers from the council and ultimately the removal of what he says is a symbol of oppression that sits in clear view, unlike the decision made about its future. And this is a demand for um, the county council to do this openly and in public. Uh, petitions are being signed, um, the ACLU is involved, so there's definitely public attention centered around this that would warrant uh, it to be in front of the public and not done behind closed doors. This is Teogram and Stephen Janis reporting for the Real News Network in Talbot County, Maryland.